Tonight, questions about these vulgar images at the Browns' first preseason home game over the weekend. Our Isabel Lawrence reached out to the Browns. She also spoke with a First Amendment expert to learn more about how those messages made it to the stadium. Two images with vulgar messages and profane language have been making the rounds on social media after the Browns' preseason home game. One, a t-shirt. The other, two signs held up by a man and boy, both seemingly referencing the controversy surrounding Deshaun Watson. That's not who... We are as Cleveland Browns fans. Browns fan Robin Lochner says she found humor in the T-shirt. I took it as a joke and I found humor in that. But not in the signs. I do think that was tasteless and disrespectful um, to women in general. We reached out to the Browns organization to ask about these items and were pointed to the First Energy Stadium banners and signs policy. We were told via email in reference to stadium policy, quote, First Energy Stadium's prohibited items list specifically includes t-shirts slash clothing with vulgar and offensive language and any other item deemed inappropriate by stadium management. And any other item deemed inappropriate by stadium management and must be in good taste prohibit banners, signs, and all items that include profane, vulgar, or offensive language and content. According to stadium policy, failure to forfeit non-compliant items can get you kicked out. I mean, it certainly is to me. Um offensive on a whole host of levels. Personal feelings aside, law professor Brian Adamson knows that situations like this come down to the Constitution and past precedent. Co Cohen versus California case um, severely limited uh, the ability of states um, to enforce um, uh, or criminalize um, speech, um, even vulgar and offensive speech, um, as what is the case here. Adamson says according to the law, the mere display of a word or expression isn't sufficient to suppress it. The majority opinion in that particular case said that if people are offended by it, um, they can merely avert their eyes. Yeah, that's right. And I also asked the Browns organization how those posters, which do contain that vulgar and offensive language, got into the stadium in the first place. I also asked them what will happen to future fans who may show up to the stadium with materials like this. And this is the response that I got from the Browns organization today. I want to read it to you in full. It says, quote, we have a long-standing, diligent process in place, end quote. Russ. Hmm. And that's that. All right. Isabel Lawrence, thank you.